Throughout my life as a filmmaker, I've always leaned towards shooting with natural light. It's bold contrasts, deep shadows, and the mood it gives any story is just something I cannot resist. And today, I want to share with you why I prefer shooting with natural light and the things I consider before using it as my primary lighting source. So that you can go out with your camera, your crew, and your actors and make something incredible with little to no lighting. I've said it once and I'll say it again. One of the biggest things you can do as a filmmaker is identifying your visual language. One thing I've done in identifying my visual language is find out my favorite ways to light things. And if you've watched anything I've ever done, you will know that my absolute favorite way to shoot anything is with natural light. It's a very popular way of shooting nowadays, and you're starting to see it more and more in both the YouTube space, the indie space, and even Hollywood. In this video, we're also gonna be looking at some of my old films and some shots I did specifically for this video to more or less prove why I love using natural light. So today, let's talk about the reason that I have used natural light throughout my entire career, some things to think about when you use natural light, and also why it is more than just an easy way to get a good look. The natural light look is very simple and very robust. It is simple in the sense that all you require is, well, in this case, windows. And I do love me some windows. Well, the technical aspect of window is really just a really clean diffusion that's already coming from a large source of light. And when I say it's robust, it's a very defined image. And with the way you can shape things based on your location, it's a very deliberate looking image. It renders skin tones beautifully. It reveals textures in a very soft light. There's no harshness or sharp beams hiding your details that you want to show. And best part is, it's organic. The scene doesn't look lit, which is the ultimate goal of a good cinematographer, in my opinion, is you are lighting something to trick the audience that this is real lighting. Unless, of course, you're going down a more creative route, but that's another video. And I've done plenty of movie sets where we have set up all kinds of lights, Kino banks, a million different quasars all over the place, aperture lights galore. But even on some of my projects with budgets, I have made those setups or have my DP do those setups just to say, I, I think the window looks better. Keep it simple, keep it robust. Simple does not mean basic. And if you can master the simplicity of your image, it's just gonna hit way harder and be way more visceral for your audience. Although I do love this image, there's a major con that comes with it. And that's timing. Filming with natural light can be a fast and easy thing. It can also be a total utter bitch because you're fighting a lighting source that is never on your schedule. It's gonna do whatever the hell it wants. And if you remember from my last video, I did mention that preparation is uh, pretty important. So what should you keep in mind when trying to fight timing? You should think first and foremost, the sun's location during the day. There are a multitude of apps out there like Sun Tracker, or you can even use a 3D image Google Maps or whatever just to see where the sun is going to be. Now with timing, a lot of people are gonna say golden hour is the way to go, just only shoot at sunrise and sunset. That is so friggin' unrealistic, especially if you're doing indoor interiors. Now, if you're doing stuff that you think you can knock it out within a very short and concise amount of time, yes, plan to do that at something like golden hour or blue hour or sunrise so that you guarantee a very zesty looking image. And within that timing also becomes flexibility. Yeah, natural light can be a vicious bitch that's trying to ruin or help your film at all times. But if let's say I have a shot that takes place on a sidewalk, and I'm under harsh light, maybe you as the DP should walk up to your director and say, hey, does this need to be right here? Because uh, there's a spot across the street that um, 
looks a lot better. And as long as it doesn't completely interfere with the themes or whatever the project is standing for, it's not too hard to just pick up, move a few paces, and boom, you got yourself a better shot. Because now I got these buildings that are kind of blocking the sun. I got a nice diffused even image, and we got a movie. Or even better with your timing, you could take a page right out of Daddy Roger Deacon's book and, well, base everything off a weather app. In fact, that's what they did for both the movie 1917 and my favorite movie of all time, Children of Men. They based all their filming time around days that were going to be overcast, rainy. Of course, there were some slight sacrifices because time is money, so you have to be realistic. But every opportunity they had to shoot outside in an overcast scenario, they took it. So if you need an outdoor shot and the whole day is going to be harsh sunlight and it's really beating down your characters and your look, look at your script. Maybe you got something you could take inside to go knock out real quick. Maybe wait for the sun to go down to be in a more controlled area. And I'm not going to talk about modifiers in this video because that's not the point of this video. And also depending on your sources or where the natural light comes from, you're going to get a variation of the same look, but it's going to really change your mood. Take a room that only has say two smaller windows, you're going to get a more defined, uh, quote unquote, edgier, moody look, which is something right up my alley, as you can see from these shots here. Or if you wanted to go the other route, you can go into a room that's, well, basically all windows, and that is a no fail way to get an excellent look that is a little more even. It's not as moody, but it still keeps a lot of organic contrast on the face. And it also helped that the day was overcast when I got these shots, so I now have two layers of diffusion from that giant light source in the sky. Another reason I love natural light is it flatters any camera system you put to it. Through my years of filmmaking, I have primarily used a Canon T5i, a Panasonic GH4, a Panasonic GH5, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K, which you're watching right now, and my big baby right now is the Ursa Mini Pro G2. And even though I'm going around and using something like the Ursa or even my more recent projects that have been shot on Ari or Red, I still look back at some of these old projects that I shot on, say, the GH4 or the GH5 or even really old Canons like the 7D Mark I. I use the same principles that I apply to my videos today and damn it, man, they look kind of nice. I kind of miss them. Like comparing my shots to a film I did all the way back in 2015 compared to a movie I did in 2021. I mean, yeah, you can see some differences and maybe you might see a difference in dynamic range, but damn, the look is still there. Now, when I put them in more lit scenarios, it starts to become more difficult and yeah, one's got more longevity than the other, blah, blah, blah. But when you really master the look of natural light and the control that you can get from actually knowing where light falls naturally in a room, any camera can look extremely cinematic. Look at the films I did on something like the GH5. It's an older camera, the dynamic range is nowhere near what the G2 is, but my highlights are still decent, I get wonderful reflections, I still get good looks on the face, and I get very nice defined shadows. And that's all just saying, look at how that's coming through the window, let's position our actors accordingly, let's position the camera accordingly, and Bob is your f***ing uncle. Another thing with this crap, practice, practice, practice. This goes for anything filmmaking. If you call yourself a filmmaker, you have to ask yourself right now, how often am I actually recording images? And if you come to the realization that it's not all the time, then you need to make an adjustment. It's just like working out. It's just like your muscles. It's like anything else. If you're not utilizing your skills, if you're not honing them, if you're not going out and seeing what you're capable of, or the more you can do, you're just not going to maintain the title and you're not going to get any better. You're probably even going to get worse. Your camera and your lenses will never be as good as what you learn and what you can do as a DP or a director, which is a big reason why I bought something like the Blackmagic Pocket series of cameras, because it's something small that I can go out and film with a deliberate mindset, knowing that this is all practice that I can take onto the next set and continue to make great images. And yeah, sometimes it takes balls to stick to this kind of shooting because sometimes you're going to be in a scenario where you might not think there is enough light. You're going to have producers, directors and gaffers tell you so much that like, hey, man, this needs more light. This needs more to it. 
but that could change the image. If you as the DP has decided that this is how I'm gonna film, I want this to utilize natural light, then make sure you do your homework so that when you go on set and you state your case, you can confidently roll up there, prove to everyone why this is the best image for the project. And my final thing to say about natural light is if you don't believe me on anything I just said, that's fine. I could be full of with a lot of things I'm saying, and that's something you as a filmmaker need to decide for yourself on anything or anyone that tries to give you education on the matters of filmmaking. But natural light's kinda, it's got some proof in the pudding. Some of my favorite films and some of the most accomplished DPs out there have been using natural light and some of them abusing it. Tree of Life was one of the first films that come to mind where literally the use of windows is what drove the entire look of the film. And if we keep going more with the works of Emmanuel Lubetzky, my favorite film, Children of Men, primarily uses natural light and practicals to light the entire movie. The Revenant was completely shot using natural light, and it won the Oscar for Best Cinematography, so that's pretty good proof. And even shows that you're seeing on Netflix, on Hulu, and a lot of these more modern takes of cinematography, you're starting to see people either doing one of two things, utilizing natural light or specifically using lighting setups to emulate natural light as much as possible. And some of these big DPs are still just doing the same techniques that you and I are doing at the lower levels. Bradford Young, the DP for Arrival, knew that the lake house they were using would only require natural light on cloudy overcast days. And that's what they did. Every shot in that house is used from the light coming through the windows and the fact that it's an overcast day and nothing else. And even go look at what YouTubers are doing, like Spencer Sakurai, who show you how something like natural light can be on something like this pocket camera, and it can get pretty damn close to the stuff that people are doing in Hollywood. So you might have your thoughts and you might have your concerns about natural light and not using an actual lighting setup when making your films. But I would urge you to give it a shot. You might be pleasantly surprised, especially if you're trying to go for a more moodier look for your films or more controlled shadows, something in lieu of something like Emmanuel Lubetzky, Bradford Young, or in some cases even Roger Deakins, or those kind of films. Give a window a shot. They're a beautiful thing. I know I'm going to keep using them. Now with that said, I am trying to expand my skill sets as a director and a filmmaker and a cinematographer and everything else I claim to be. So I am trying to use more lights and more setups like that, so maybe next video I'll talk more about how a guy who hates using lights tries to use lights. Maybe. So if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. I just want to say a couple things before we go. On our Instagram, at Six Shop Films, the other active member of the Six Shop, Forrest Moreland, just posted a reel that shows our next big documentary project. This thing is going to be extra special. And also, holy shit, thank you guys so much for the decade of filmmaking video where uh, it reached about 12,000 views at the time of filming this and I've never never had that from a YouTube video and it almost got me a thousand subscribers so thank you guys you actually made me believe that I might be able to do this shit. thank you for watching I hope you got something out of it um, I apologize if this feels a little good morning Vietnam with the microphone get out there grab your camera go practice get some epic shots go make something so that you will be ready at any point to make the movie in your head that you've always wanted to make. See you on the next one. Roll the doggy B roll.